Where are you going? Should he stay or should he go? Thomas Healy. Uh, it's been a bone of contention for a lot of people for the last few years and last six months, last one year, uh, you know, over various lengths of time. And should he stay or should he go? Well, I am I, from my POV, as for Robert, <laughs> your daughter, the acronym, in my opinion and from my point of view, he should stay. Absolutely, he should stay. He started this journey, um, and, and it's not just a money-making venture for Thomas. This is his passion. You got to remember that, guys. This is his passion. This is his baby. And I, he's going to see it through, okay? And he's going to see it through the right way. Now, in every journey, sometimes, you know, you takes twists and turns, and you got to change your path a little bit. You got to make adjustments. But you got to keep the destination in mind, okay? So on this journey, this Hylian journey that Thomas Healy is on, he's had just due to the changing landscape, the changing conditions, the, you know, the market conditions, the uh, everything, all conditions, the, the journey has, has changed somewhat, but the destination stays the same, okay? That's the most important thing. His eye is on the prize. His eye is on the destination, and he's going to get us there, okay? It's better to get to the destination safe and sound and put that ship into harbor safely than to be hasty, anxious, impatient, and allow your ego to take over from common sense and logic and good judgment and all those good things. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what I mean here. Um, I worked in the oil patch, in the oil and gas industry, and hydraulic fracturing in particular, for many years. Okay, this could be potentially a dangerous operation that we were carrying out. You know, 50 or 60 men on a, on a site. And when we pumped down a well, we were pumping fluid at times, up to 10,000 pounds per square inch. Think about that, guys. 10,000 pounds per square inch. 170 MPA. Or, so I'm telling you, like it could be dangerous stuff. But we followed certain protocols, certain procedures to mitigate the danger, the risk. So we, we would do a pressure test on all of our setup, our iron, our, our rigging up to the well prior to actually commencing the fracking operation it was a part of the part of the it was a part of the journey to get to the end goal of the frack and was it costly yes it was extremely costly uh, an hour an hour downtime on a large oil and gas well operation could be upwards of ten thousand dollars of uh, of swing in either direction or more so the numbers are substantial but it did not it, this, the numbers could not trump getting it done right, getting the job done right, safely and properly. Because at the end of the day, the customer wanted a job. Well, the job had to be done right. You you, you frocked out that well and you made a, a well that produced natural gas. If you skipped cut corners, you know, it's just not going to work. I'll give you another example. Couple, the Titanic. Okay, this is a good one. Now, the Titanic set out uh, from, I think, Portsmouth, England? But anyway, set out from New York City. They were delayed due to weather, bad weather in the North Atlantic for a few days. And the weather was still bad, but they were anxious. They were anxious. They wanted to get to New York City, and they wanted to say, Hey, look at this, the Titanic, indestructible. There's nothing that's indestructible, but ego... Ego, pride, impatience took over from logic. Even when they were out in the North Atlantic, they had warnings of icebergs up ahead. They're in Iceberg Alley, the North Atlantic, 500 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. The most rough, dangerous seas in the world to begin with, let alone these icebergs. But haste, impatience, pride, ego, all resulted in catastrophe failed. It was a failed mission. Okay. P 
patience, perseverance, taking the time to do it right. I'll give you another example. I'll end it with this. Kind of a funny one. Okay, I'll end it with a funny one. So back when my business partner, upstairs now in the big chair, my dad, he, uh, when I was fix, fixing up houses and renovating houses, I'd get a lot of advice from him. Anyway, he was with me one day and I, ha I had installed, I had to fix up a door for one of my uh, lady tenant and, uh, and I, and I did it in a hurry and I installed the, uh, bolt lock and I, and I basically, I fucked up the plate where the bolt goes through. Okay. The plate is you know, a certain size. I fucked up the hole. Anyway, so I went, my dad was with me and I needed to get a plate, like a bigger plate that had more forgiveness in it. So I would, would be able to put it on because I fucked up the door jam, gouged it. I, <laughs> I butchered it basically anyway, but I didn't want to tell my dad that, right. You know, you'd be embarrassed. So anyway, I had to get a bigger plate to give me more forgiveness for, so I could have that striker plate and have the bolt go through the hole. So I was explaining to my dad, I, I, I told him I needed to get a bigger plate just cause it's, cause, uh, you know, it's a girl and she's worried about people breaking in and, and, uh, it's, it's a larger plate. It provides better security on the door jam and that. And, uh, he said, I'm not sure what you mean, son. I, I don't, a bigger plate. Like, and then he didn't know, right? He never, he never, he never had to use one when he did stuff because he didn't fuck it up. But uh, anyway, so I went in the hardware store. He was out here in the truck and I came back out and I showed him. Oh, oh, he said, you needed a fucked it up the first time plate. <laughs> yeah, I, Jesus, I, I laughed. I laughed. He I, I, and that was the end of that. Uh, he knew, he knew the gig was up. I fucked it up. He said, son, yeah. I I know what you mean now. I, I didn't know what you meant. You needed a fucked it up the first time plate. So there you go, guys. I rushed and I fucked it up and I had to get it. I had to get a fucked it up the first time plate to fix it. Now with the highly unhyper truck ERX, we don't want that to happen. We don't want to send fucked it up the first time units out on the road because that could be the end of the mission and we don't want that so absolutely healy stays he finishes the journey he gets the ship safely into port and he doesn't have to go buy a fucked it up the first time plate anyway that's all i got guys have a great day don't sweat the small stuff stay in the saddle ride out the journey it's better to ride it out slow and steady then try to be a cowboy and a renegade and run that fucking horse right off a cliff. That's all I got. Have a great day.